All right. Well, great morning. Great morning, everybody. This is the Power Coach, Madeline Alexander Barbie. It is my honor to welcome you to Power and Prayer. We're get, getting together every Monday through Thursday morning, and we are going through the Word of God, and we're praying together, and we are applying the Word of God to our businesses. We're applying the Word of God to our wealth building. We're applying the Word of God to every aspect of our lives, and I'm excited to close out this week of power and prayer with you. I've got a great scripture for you today that we're going to talk about. And I'm excited that we are in the midst of Holy Week. We are moving our way toward Resurrection Sunday. And I know we're all excited about that because we're celebrating the amazing miracle of our redemption through our Savior, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I'm excited to share with you today as we move into as we move into this fantastic weekend, as we celebrate all together. So good to have you guys here. We're streaming live on Facebook. We're streaming live on YouTube and I'm excited to connect with you. You can connect on all channels at the power coach. You can reach out on TikTok. You can reach out on um, Instagram. You can reach out on threads on X at the power coach. You can get a hold of me and get connected. And I would love for you guys to get connected. I'm excited for all that is going on. Great morning, woman of God. Good to see you, Sherry. We are now joined by our member out in Raleigh, North Carolina. We're all over the United States and it's so good to see. She knows to rep hashtag, hashtag live and then hashtag replay if you're joining by replay and put that city and state out there. So good to see you. We're glad to have you here. And I'm super excited. I've been working really hard on Kingdom SWAT, just getting that prayer arm of our work. We're still business building. We're still doing our wealth building. We are on a mission to create 1 million millionaires across the United States of America. And we're bringing economic recovery and financial empowerment to 1 million millionaires. We're gonna to touch 1 million families nationwide one family at a time, beginning with yours. And I am excited to continue with that movement. We've got great things that are happening in Kingdom Millionaire Movement. I want you to get connected to it. You can go to prosperwiththepowercoach.com to get connected. And um, the Lord just commissioned me. He's like, I want you to put a prayer arm to that. Put a prayer arm so that everything that we're working toward, everything that we're praying for, everything that we are striving to do is we enlarge our territory that is covered by the word of God that we're covering. We know how to defend our families, how to defend our financial gains, how to defend our health and just protect ourselves. We want longevity in the movement, right? Like we want longevity in everything that we do. We don't want to do it, have short term victory. We want long term, sustainable victory. And that only happens when you do it in prayer. That only happens when the bedrock is prayer, when the bedrock is the word of God. You have to build your house on the rock and then everything else. Like even when the storms come, the storms are going to come. The rain's going to come. The winds are going to come. They're going to beat on the house. But we know the house won't fall. And so the same thing applies to this initiative that I'm working on to build kingdom millionaires. We're building all the foundation. We're building on the solid rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm building a prayer academy, our kingdom SWAT academy, so that we know how to do warfare prayer. Okay. We're learning how to do that so that this is sustainable and long-term, and we're going to protect every family that comes in connection with what we're doing. So that's what it's all about. And I'm excited. It's just how the Lord's given clarity to the vision has been amazing. In the time that we've been doing power and prayer, start out doing power and prayer. And then the Lord just it's like, okay, this is what I want you to do next and do it, do it right now. Like not next month, not next week, do it now. So I've been implementing fast and furious to get everything uh, put together and ready to go. So good to have you. Sherry's with us. She is building in Kingdom Millionaire Movement with us. And I'm excited about that. I'm glad that she's connected and um, she's going to be taking our SWAT classes as well and getting everything, getting that knowledge. And she's already a very powerful woman of God. So this is just going to add more power. That's all we're doing. God's joining forces. He's bringing powerful people together so that we can go help the people. We can go help and change lives across the nation. God is 
bringing a divine appointment to people, bringing them together. I'm excited about that. So it's good to have all the, the awesome folks. If you need to get connected to me, go ahead. You can jump on my inbox. You can DM me and I'll get you going in Kingdom Millionaire Movement. I'll get you going in Kingdom SWAT. And we're going to get you moving forward and accomplishing all that God has for you to do. So um, let me tell you this. I added the registration link uh, to prosperwiththepowercoach.com. So if you're not registered for Kingdom SWAT Academy, you can get registered for the Academy. You can take the classes if you want to. You can just take like course one is coming up April 7th. Sunday, April 7th, we're doing course one, Foundations of Warfare. Course two is going to be on Saturday, the 13th, and it is Know Your Enemy. We're going to talk about principalities, name principalities in the Bible, so you know you're fighting against who you are defeating. And we're going to talk about that and the promises of God. We're going to do that on Saturday. It's going to be extremely informative class, extremely informative. So you want to be in those classes. And then if you want the hands on, you want the hands on so that we can work on your prayer life, work on your prayers, work on your situations, work on what the enemy is doing. And you want to attack that and defeat that and you want to get the hands on intensive, then you want to come into Kingdom SWAT Academy and you want to get the hands on training and coaching. And I'm excited. So that link is up now at prosperwiththepowercoach.com. And you'll see it. And for right now, as we're rolling out, I'm giving a 50 percent um, incentive off of the registration. So the registration is normally 197 and it is 97 right now. So it's a little bit more than half off that you can get registered because I want to help people get in and we're going to get started. OK, which is great. So great morning, Verlene. Good to have you here. She's joining from Birmingham, Alabama joining live and she is a brand new kingdom swat academy cadet she's in there excited to have Erlene in there along with betty spicer is in there from las vegas she has joined and uh, it's going to go through the full academy i'm excited about that um wilma hughes sabatino she is in there going to go through the entire SWAT Academy, and then Vita Hillier has joined. She's going through Kingdom SWAT Academy, and Lashiba Taylor Jones, Kendra, Pastor Kendra Jacobs is also joining. So, Pastor Kendra, another great coaching client, is on there. Lashiba Taylor Jones, she's ready to go. So, Kingdom SWAT Academy is building up. I'm excited. It's very, very good. So, fired up to have you guys on and getting connected and we're going to have some great things. So you want to get signed up for class one and class two. If you, uh, if you're joining kingdom SWAT Academy, just sign up for class one because you'll have all the activities for April included. So you just need to get one class and get your registration done. And then you're set for the month of April. Okay. So go ahead and dive in. If you have any questions about that, it, everybody, it's open for everybody to take the classes. If you want the hands-on intensive, if you want the one-on-one -on -one time with me, you want the time where we're going to get together. We're having fight night, April 5th. That'll be our first time getting together. We're going to do some orientation work and then we're going to go into fight night and we're going to be praying over your specific needs. And I can't wait for that. That's going to be amazing, amazing, amazing. So you can now go to prosperwiththepowercoach.com and you're going to see the registration link for Kingdom SWAT Academy right at the top. It's there and you can add that. Get in there. Get connected. God's given me a number of how many people we are going to minister to across the nation. We're going to get prayer warriors all across the nation. It's already starting. OK, we're in Houston. We're in Alabama, Las Vegas. We're already doing it right. We're already getting academy members that are coming in all across. And um, of course, Kingdom Millionaire Movement, we're doing that all across the nation as well. So I'm excited, like uh, pushing forward to get everything done that we need to get done. So let me dive into these scriptures. Just want to talk to you a little bit about what's happening. 
So we're going to talk today about being God confident. I want you to put God confident in the chat. Everybody put God confident. You know, we learn a lot about self-confidence and self-confidence is good. There's nothing wrong with being self-confident. You should believe in yourself. Absolutely, you should. You should believe in you. But the foundation of that belief needs to come from the word of God. The, you, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Because in my work in, in Barrier Breakthrough, I've been working with people. I've coached over 13,000. I'm approaching 14,000 one-on-one -on -one coaching hours since 2009. One-on-ones with people, talking to people, working with people, helping people, business owners, entrepreneurs, C-suite professionals, individuals at very high levels in corporations, working with people in the ministry, pastors, ministers, all over the nation. And I can tell you the top two barriers that people deal with are number one, undiscovered mission and purpose. People don't know their mission assignment. There are people that, that are serving in very high capacities still don't really know their, their purpose. It's like, okay, I went to college, I got my degree in X, Y, Z, and I'm doing this work and I'm not satisfied. I'm not fulfilled. I don't think this is what I'm really supposed to be doing for my life because they don't know their mission and purpose, like what God created them to be. And until that void gets filled, you won't be satisfied in your life. You won't feel a, a deep sense of satisfaction. So in coaching with people, there are 13 main barrier types. So I'm teaching from a different aspect of what I do, but there are 13 main barrier types that barriers are underlying, undetected and unpredictable mental obstacles that stop you from being able to perform at your peak. And there are 13 different categories of them. And the number one is undiscovered mission and purpose. Just people like, I don't, I don't really know what I'm here on the earth to do. And it can cause, it can wreak havoc in your life because it's like, you, you don't have the glue that pulls everything together when you don't know what you're created for. So we have to get in touch with the creator to understand why you're here and then anchor everything to that. Anchor your work to it, your family to it. Everything that you do has to start from that strong foundation of understanding who, who God created you to be. And then the number two is a faulty self-worth, self-concept and self-esteem. Like, it's faulty. And what happens is when you build your self-concept, how you see yourself, your self-worth, what you think you're worthy of, and your self-esteem, how you treat yourself on a foundation that's built on accomplishment, performance, any of those things, it can go up and down. Like how other people perceive you, if you build, if you build it on validation, you're seriously in trouble. You're in big trouble because that validation can come and go in an instant. We're seeing that in Holy Week. Okay, the beginning of Holy Week, Palm Sunday, they're, you know, like Hosanna and all that. And by the end of the week, they're like, crucify him, crucify him, right? Like, we can't go by external validation. Jesus had to know his purpose. He had to know what he was here for. And he had to know that his entire being is grounded in, in, in his knowing of who he is, that he is the son of God. So it's not based on external validation because that can change in a week. We're seeing that in Holy Week. So a lot of people have built their self-concept, their self-worth, their self-esteem on what other people think. Social media is riddled with that. It's all in, you know, it, it's this performance-based thing. And it's like when other people are shouting you out and all that, you feel good about yourself. When they're not, you don't feel good about yourself. That's external validation. It's extremely dangerous. You, you destroy your life trying to seek external validation. So you got to build your self-confidence. If you're going to be confident, some people are confident because they have a certain degree. Some people are confident because they have a certain job. And all that stuff is, is shaky. It's sinking sand. It's all sinking sand. It can change in an instant. It can change in an instant. Okay, how you're doing professionally and how that looks or how people validate you or shout you out, all that stuff. You you can't you can't build on that. And here's the other thing. Like if if you have childhood trauma, you have trauma in your life. Could be adult trauma, childhood trauma. You've had things that have happened to you. It'll shake your self-confidence. It'll shake your self-confidence, it'll shake your self-concept, self-worth, and self-esteem. It'll shake it. 
You can have things that happen to you as a child that it can be words spoken over you, things that people have said to you, about you, and it'll affect how you think about yourself and what you think you can accomplish and what you think you can do. And so then I've had people come into coaching and they know that they know they've been through trauma or sometimes they don't realize the the source is the trauma, but they'll come into coaching. We start working and they're trying to fix their faulty self-concept. They're trying to like, I'm not confident in what I'm trying to do professionally. I'm not confident as an entrepreneur. I'm not confident as a business owner. And it, so we start digging into it, trying to figure out why. So then we figure out, okay, it could be a traumatic event. It could be words spoken over them. It could be all these different things that can shape or mar your self-concept. So then what people try to do is they try to fix it from within themselves. So you're already, you're already dealing with something that's happened to you, a, a trauma, a, a difficult event, words spoken, different relationships that you've had with people that have injured you. You've been through things. And so you're already... OK, maybe you've done something, maybe it's something you've done. Maybe it's failure in your own life. Maybe it's things that you tried to do. You failed at it, didn't succeed. So that's messed you up for believing of what, what you can do in the future. So now what people try to do is they're trying to fix it from a place that's already faulty. So you can't fix a faulty self-concept, self-worth and self-esteem from inside your own mindset. That's the problem. That's the fallacy. So we do all this work and people go through it. People go through therapy for years. I've been OK. So it's great. Go. If you need help, you need to talk to someone. Do it. It's not a negative thing. I'm just I'm just trying to show you where the pitfall happens. So you can go through therapy. You can come into coaching. You can work. You're trying to do affirmations. You're trying to do all this stuff and change your self-concept, self-worth and self-esteem from a place that's already faulty. You can add more education. You can go get more degrees. You can go you can go do all this external stuff, but you can't fix something that's broken from inside the broken space. It doesn't work. You can do it for a month. You can do it for six months. But I guarantee you. It's going to it's going to come apart because it's not built on something that's solid. You can't you can't fix when you are not confident about yourself and you're you're trying to be like, I'm going to build this business. I'm going to do this weight loss program. I'm going to get fit. I'm going to do whatever you're going to do. OK, you come into a relationship. And if your self-concept, self-worth, self-esteem isn't anchored in the right thing, you can't fix that from inside of an already broken place. You won't fix it. You can band-aid it. You can make it look better. You can dress it up. You can do it for six months. You can do it for 12 months. Maybe if you have really strong self-will, if you have a very strong like willpower, you could do it. But eventually the fault, the fault line, like the crack is going to come back out. It's going to come back out. It, it, it always comes back out. It doesn't matter how successful you get. That fault line is always going to come back out because there's always going to be something or somebody, it's going to be an event or a person, something, you're going to come across something that's going to cause you to start questioning yourself all over again. You're going to hit up against an experience and you're going to experience like, I don't know if I can do it. You're not sure that you can succeed because maybe that old failure, you can band-aid around it. But if you don't fix that thing, it, th when you have the next challenge, you got to go to the next level. You got to do the next thing. You get promoted on the job. You're trying to build a business. You're trying to do some things different financially that you've never done. You're trying to fix your health. You're trying to go into the relationship and have a successful relationship. It's showing up with your children. You have children. Some of the things that you went through in your own childhood trauma are now showing up when you're trying to raise your children. Eventually, it always comes back. Always. If you're trying to fix, alter, adjust, change who you are, who you, what you believe about yourself, what you believe about your capabilities, what you think about your opportunities, what you think about your future, that will always, the, 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 the faultiness, the, the, the weakness in that will always come back when you encounter something that's hard you encounter something that reminds you or triggers you back to the previous experience that you had. If you're trying to fix it yourself, you can do affirmations, which are good. I do affirmations. They're good. They will help. 
but they won't fix. Okay, it's just like when you go to the doctor, they can treat, but Jesus heals. So they can treat the illness, they can treat the symptoms, but Jesus heals. You got to go to the doctor, cooperate with everything that they're telling you to do. But you got to know the healer. You got to know Jehovah Rapha, the one who made your body. So the source of the healing doesn't come from the place that's already, that already has a problem. So when we're talking about our mind, our emotions, and our will, our soul realm, when you have a confidence issue, when you're trying to build a business or you're trying to change your financial status and you have a confidence issue, you can't fix a confidence issue from the place that's already affected, the place that's already broken, okay? The, pl the place that's already got something that's like, the place where you're like, I remember my past failure. I remember my past mistake. I remember the thing that I did that didn't work out. I remember when I tried that before and it didn't work out. You can't fix it from that. So where you where do you fix it from? Like, uh oh, where, where do I fix it? You fix it from the word of God. You fix it from your maker, your creator, who knows your original intent. I want you to put the words original intent. God knows how he made you. And he formed you. We talked about this in Jeremiah 1 5. Remember when we talked about Jeremiah 1 5? That the Lord is telling um, Jeremiah, like before I formed you in the womb, because Jeremiah is going through this, because Jeremiah is like young. And he's like, How am I going to speak to these people? I know what you're calling me to do, but mm -mm. so it shows up in Jeremiah. So he's like, Wait a minute. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And so he's telling him, I sanctified you. I'm the one that set you apart and I'm the one that ordained you a prophet to the nations. So he's reminding Jeremiah where to get back to, to fix the thing, because he's being intimidated and you might go through like, I'm too young. I'm too old. I I've never done this before. I've never built a business. I, I don't know how to do this. I'm not good with money. I'm not good with math. All these things start to come up that are like, coming out of your life experiences that counter what God is trying to get you to do. So yesterday we were talking about how the enemy will just lie about time. He'll lie. Like it's not going to happen. God's going to forsake you. This is the other area that the enemy just constantly lies. He lies to you about your identity. He lies to you about what your capabilities are constantly. The enemy is constantly. You can't do that. That's not going to succeed. Remember you tried that before this happened. He's constantly going to, deal with you in that way. So one of the things that you have to do is you've got to anchor your confidence in anything that you're going to do moving forward, like Jeremiah in God's original intent. I want you to put the words original intent, original intent. What, how did God make you? How did he form you? He didn't form you in a way that's not confident. He didn't form you in a way where you have a fear of failure, a fear of success, a fear of the unknown, all that comes from the spirit of fear. God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. He didn't give you that. So if we're going to fix it, if we're going to go on and we're going to be millionaires, we're going to go on and we're going to be, we're going to build kingdom millionaire movement. We're going to go on and we're going to build kingdom SWAT and we're going to, we're going to transform lives. We're going to help people take back everything that's been stolen from them, protect everything that's been stolen. We're going to fix it. We're going to do that. You know how we're going to do it? We have to anchor that in the word of God. We have to get back to God's original intent, how he made you before all the trauma stuff starts to happen, before the childhood trauma, before the adult trauma, before the failures, before the setbacks, before you go through people trying to you know, stop you, people hating on you, all that. OK, if you're affected by that, if you're affected by like, people's opinions. You have to get delivered from people's opinions. So I'm going to take you into the scripture. What I want, I want, I want you to understand the, the background, like how the Lord has brought me through to understand this because I've been coaching for years, 2009. And I've seen it over and over and over again at people at all levels of society, all levels of success. Some of the most successful people really struggle with their internal self-concept, self-worth and self-esteem. Because it's built on things like accomplishment, success, status, stuff. It's built on external things that are all shaky. It's all sinking sand. None of it is going to sustain because at the end of the day, all that stuff is just going to burn up. 
So you've got to go back to the original intent. Like, what did God make me? So how do you find that? You find that in the word of God. So when I went through and I first became a coach and I certified as a life coach, I certified as an executive mastermind coach. Okay. I certified as a business success coach. Okay. Relationship recovery, all these different coaching certifications I went through. And the thing that was missing was the word of God. The thing that was like, okay, but we're not dealing with some major, we're, we're dealing with the soul around the mind, the emotions, and to some extent the will, but we're not doing the spirit man who is the real person. You are a spirit. You live in a body and you have a soul, your mind, your emotions, and your will, but the real person, the original person, the original intent, the original person that God formed is the spirit man. And when you are regenerated, when you're born again, that's made perfect right away as soon as you get born again. And then we work on that soul realm for the rest of your life. We have to renew our mind. We have to heal our emotions and we have to get stronger in our will to make better choices. We spend the rest of our life working out our salvation in the soul realm, but the spirit realm's per perfected. And the Holy Spirit comes to, to dwell with us, praise the Lord, to help us in this journey so you can live out God's original purpose and his original intent for you. And so part of that is we want to succeed financially and we want to succeed professionally. We want to succeed in our families. We want to have holistic blessing. But we got to work in here. And the thing that gets faulty is we're not building that. You can't build that on affirmations. You can't do you can't change what's broken from the broken thing. Like you can't, if you have a broken arm, you can't fix your broken arm with the broken arm. Somebody's got to step in and set the bone and do all this stuff. Like you can't fix it. So the same thing is, is true in our soul realm. You can't fix the broken places in your soul realm by yourself. It won't happen. And you can go through, you can go you, you can improve so you can go to therapy. It'll improve it so you can cope and you can function and you can move forward. And it's good. It's helpful. I'm not saying it's not helpful. I'm just saying you're not going to fix it. You're not going to fix it till you get back to the original intent of who God made you. And what he called you to do. So that's going to bring me to the scriptures that I want to share with you today. OK, Holy Spirit's talking to a couple people. So we're going to go to these scriptures and I want to understand. I want to teach you this concept of being God confident because God does want you to have strong self-confidence. He wants you to be confident. He wants you to believe. But if you can anchor that on God, you're in a much, much stronger position because where you are weak, God is strong. Where you lack knowledge, the Holy Spirit knows everything. He'll lead and guide you into all truth. And so the Lord all constantly tells you, my strength is perfected in your weakness. God's strength is perfected in that place of your weakness. So when, you, when you're like, I've never built a business. I don't know if I can do it. But you're like, but God has made me more than a conqueror. Through Christ who loves me, so I can do this because God loves me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We say that, but do you slow down enough to hear what you're saying? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He strengthens my weak place. He strengthens the place where I am wounded. He strengthens the place where I've gone through damage. And we all have. If you've been out of the womb 10 minutes, you're starting to encounter human beings and the damage starts. It starts and it happens all through childhood. It happens like we we encounter experiences because we all have a sin nature. And we encounter other people with a sin nature and all of that happens. So how do you go on and fulfill all of God's purpose, all of God's plan for you? <clears throat> how do you go do that? Well, you have to go back to to anchor in the Lord. You got to go back and anchor. So these verses of scripture, we say them all the time. But if you listen to Romans 837. Well, let me back up. Let's look at Romans 831. We're going to be in Romans 8 today. So in Romans 831, it says, then what what then shall we say to these things? All the different things that they're let, let me let me take you. I'll give you context. 
So the scripture says, if God is for us, who can be against us? We want to be God confident. Okay. If God is for us, who can be against us? But let me give you context. Let me give you context. Let's go to Romans chapter eight. And I'm going to back up and let's start. Let's start at verse 28. And it says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. OK, we talked about we talked about um, Jeremiah. He was called according to his purpose. So that's what the Apostle Paul is telling us. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose, for whom he foreknew original intent, for whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, that Jesus might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, original intent, these he also called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. That's verse 30. What then shall we say to these things? OK, so we know the process. It's God who justifies. It's God who has predestined us. It's God who calls you according to your purpose. It's God who works out all things together for good. So what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? That's God confidence. OK, so the Apostle Paul is shifting. He's like, OK, it's God who's done all this. He's formed you. He's your creator. He's predestined you. He called you. He's appointed you. He's anointed you. So if God is doing all these things and he's on your behalf and he's fighting for you, who can be against you? That's God confidence. See, if you get that attitude as an entrepreneur, you you won't be intimidated by learning new skills. You won't be intimidated by going out there, talking to people, sharing with people, sharing your products. doesn't matter what happens in that exchange if you're anchored in the Lord, if you're building your wealth, if you're saying, I am going to be a millionaire. I am going to free my family. I am going to set a new foundation for my children. I am going to leave an inheritance to my children's children. I am going to transform what's going on in my bloodline. I'm stopping alcoholism in my bloodline. I'm stopping drug use in my bloodline. I am stopping uh, divorce in my bloodline. I'm stopping adultery in my bloodline. I'm stopping all of these attacks. I'm stopping all of this bondage in my bloodline. I'm stopping weakness, timidity, um, all, all of that. I'm stopping that in blood. It stops with me. I'm transforming what's happening in my family. I'm taking my family in a whole new direction. I am going to establish all that we're going to do on the solid rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're about to experience the abundance and the blessed life and the overflow life that God promised. That starts with me. That starts with my, my uh, generation. That starts with what I'm doing in my family. And I can do it because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do it because if God is for us, who can be against us? That's Romans 8, 31. Who then shall we... Uh, what then, I'm sorry, what then shall we say to these things? What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He who did not spare his own son. We're in that week. We're in Holy Week. Verse 33, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Who can bring a charge against you? Who can stand? This is why you get out of external validation. It doesn't matter if you're if you if your belief in yourself rises and falls on somebody else's external validation of you. You're in trouble because then you're giving license for other people to bring a charge against you. You're given license for the enemy to bring a charge against you. And that's what he does, because he's the accuser of the brethren. He's going to accuse you all day, every day. So what we do is like, no, you can't bring a charge against me. Who can bring a charge? I'm God's elect. I'm God's chosen one. That's not arrogant. That's just God confident. I'm chosen by God. I'm elected by God. I'm ordained by God. I'm sanctified and set apart by God. I'm called, appointed, and anointed by God. I can do it because God said I could do it. I can build a business and be successful because God said I can. It doesn't matter. 
Somebody external doesn't think I can do it. I can do it because God said I can. I can build a prayer movement across this entire nation. I can teach people how to pray the word of God. I can shut down the enemy by teaching people how to pray and how to pray in their families, how to pray over their marriage, how to pray over their children, how to pray over their finances, how to pray over their health, how to pray over every circumstance that you're ever going to face. I can teach that from the word of God. Why? Because God has appointed me to do it. So I can do it. Doesn't matter if I've never done it before. I can do it. God's given me the knowledge. He's given me the gifting. He's given me the talent, the ability. And the, the most important thing is he's given me the calling. He called me to do it. Therefore, I can do it. God called me to build the business. Therefore, I can do it. I can build one million millionaires across the United States of America because God said I could. And he told me to do it. 10 years previous to when I connected with the men of God, who he also told we're going to do it. And we joined forces and they're like, you know, God said to go get a million people. And, and it's like, yeah, God, God told me to get a million people too. And we're going to join forces. And now we're working together in collaboration. And I was stunned by that. Like, wow. I knew soon as I heard the vision of our company to build 1 million millionaires, I knew this like this, God ordained me to be here. He ordained me to be here because he's been telling me that for years. He's been telling me that. And I was like, how am I going to do that? I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'm going to do it because God said I could. I don't know the how. Sometimes we get stuck on the how. How, or how is that going to happen? No, you accept it. You accept the calling. Mary had to accept the calling that she was going to bring forth a child. And she's never been with a man. She had to accept what the angel Gabriel's telling her, okay, all right, Lord, be it unto me, as you've said. I don't know how, but I believe you, whatever you said, okay, that's what's going to happen. I trust you because my confidence is in you. My confidence is in God. But see, when your confidence is in you, it's shaky. The enemy can attack you in that. He can, well, you, last time you didn't do it. Last time you gave up. Last time you stopped. Last time you quit. This happened. This, you know, this person wasn't a good business partner. This person did that. You know, he just is accusing, accusing. You didn't do it. Last time, you know, you, you don't have a degree. You don't have um any experience in, in business, you don't have, how, how are you going to do that? Like, girl, sit down. This is how the enemy talks. Go sit down somewhere. You can't, you already know. Why are you even trying? You're too old to do that. You're too old. You're too young. So we take the focus off of ourselves. I'm extremely self-confident because I know I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ. So all the power of God is available to me. All the power of the cross is available to me. All the resurrection power is available to me because Romans 8, 11 said the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in me. The same spirit, the same Holy Spirit that after Jesus was crucified, went through all that he went through, just unrecognizable after all the, the, the beating and all the torment that he went through. And then the, the crucifixion going through that, the same spirit that went into that tomb. Right. So here's Jesus, the same spirit that's with him through that whole ordeal, the same spirit that's with him in uh, the garden of Gethsemane that gave him the strength to do it, the same spirit that went through and endured with them all the way through the cross, the same spirit that's in that tomb, that's putting his body back together, the same spirit, the same spirit that, that resurrects the physical body, that resurrects the physical body of, of Jesus, the same spirit lives in you. So if he can resurrect Jesus and he can he can restore and resurrect and we see this whole miracle that our whole entire um, salvation is built on. If he can do that, he can resurrect your dream. He's a re he can resurrect your your dead dream. He can resurrect your dead vision. But you can't do it based on confidence in you. That's that you I I've died. My life is now hidden in Christ in God. 
The old me is gone and I'm a new creation. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old spiritual and moral condition has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Okay, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So let's keep going. So he says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Let's back up. Let me back up. Let me back up to verse 31 again. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for kingdom SWAT, who can be against it? Nobody. If God is for kingdom millionaire movement, who can be against it? Nobody. If God is for us and you need to say, if God is for whatever your family, you say your last name. If God is for us, my family, my tribe, my kids, my spouse, if God is for us, who can be against us? God confident. Okay. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him freely give us all things? Okay, now I'm not reading that from a perspective. Don't read that because people go, oh, yeah. God's, you're just reading that like God's going to give you stuff. Like, don't know. It's like, it's the perspective of understanding. He's done the hardest thing God will ever do for you, which is to give his own son. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever shall believe on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The hardest thing God will, God the Father could ever do is, is sacrifice his own son so that he could get you back. He's the firstborn among many brethren so he could get all of us as his children back. But he had to sacrifice the firstborn to get all of us. So the hardest thing God has ever had to do, he's done. So if he's done that, how will he not freely give us all things? What the apostle Paul is trying to get you to understand is by faith, if you can believe and you understand the miracle of salvation and what God had to do to get salvation to you, that's the hardest thing he's ever going to have to do to get salvation to you. And now that he's gotten salvation to you, he'll freely give you all the other stuff. The other stuff is just an act of our faith and an act in our, of our belief in him that he's going to do everything else that he said he was going to do. So then when you're trying to, to, to get your posture up, get yourself like, okay, I'm ready to go build whatever God, if, if he told you to build a ministry, if he told you to build a church, if he's told you, he's called you to pastor, he's called you to build a business, he's called you to raise your family, he's called you, whatever he's called you to do, to be a teacher, police officer, firefighter, whatever he's called you to do, you can do it. And we know that he will freely give you the strength, the power, the grace, the instruction, the, the competence and the confidence to do it because he's already given you the hardest thing he'll ever have to give you, which is his son. That's what the, that's what we're not reading it from a position of greed. Like, oh, God's going to give me. We're not reading it from that position, but he'll freely give you. He'll freely give you the finances you need. He'll freely supply. My God will liberally supply and fill to the full your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. He's given you the hard thing, which was the Lord Jesus, what we celebrate this week. But now, along with that, he'll freely give you all things. That was the hard part. He's defeated death, hell, and the grave. He's done the hard part. Okay. So then he says, verse 33, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. God is justifying you. He foreknew you. He's predestined you to be conformed to the image of his son. And he justifies you just as if the things that we do in sin have never happened. So then it goes on and it says, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine? Okay. Or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are killed all, the, all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. 
That's verse 37, Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, we're going to study these principalities. Okay, we're about to learn. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. The things that you're dealing with right now and the things that are coming, you don't even know about yet. Nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate you from God's original intent for you, for your life. His love for you, his calling on your life, his mission, nothing. So that's where you anchor your confidence. That's where you anchor your belief in yourself. That's where you anchor. I can't, I'm, I'm a, I'm a slave. Like whatever God calls me to do is done because of this. Not because I, I think so highly of myself because the Bible tells you, you know, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to think. So I, it's not about self. Like we use the term self-confidence and I understand what you mean. But as an entrepreneur, as a business owner, as a mother, as a as a father, as a pastor, as a minister, as whatever you're called to do, as an artist, as an entertainer, as a chef, as whatever God's called you to do, as an accountant, as an engineer, whatever God's called you to do, we have full confidence. We can do all of it. We, we, we are fully confident because our confidence is in God. And he will never fail. He never comes up short. He never fails you. That's where it's at. Do you guys understand? I want you to put God confident in the chat because oftentimes when we're talking about, I'm going to go build a business. I'm going to become a millionaire. I'm going to do whatever you're going to do. Our confidence gets shaky and I see it and I hear it in what you say and how you operate. I don't know if I can learn it. Yes, you can. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I don't know if I can accomplish whatever. Yes, you can. I don't know if I can be a good father. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. My dad was absent. He wasn't there. Let's say you're in that situation. Okay. Like I didn't grow up with my father. I don't know if I can be a good father. You have an excellent father. God, the father will step in. Okay. My, my spouse left me. God tells you in the book of Isaiah that your maker is your husband. God will step in and be your husband. Doesn't matter. There's nothing you'll face in this life. Nothing. I got to raise my children as a single parent. In the natural, but God will step in and be the parent. He'll, he'll step in as father. He'll step in and do it. You need to be God confident. See, when you then then you're not shaky on any because your past experiences, your voids, your failures, what's missing in you, your childhood trauma, your adult trauma, words spoken over you, word curses people try to put. You're, you're never going to be able to do that. You can't do that. You're not this. You're not that. You can't do this. You can't do that. The absence of a of a parent, the loss of a of a sibling, whatever, whatever it is, something the teacher said, the teacher didn't believe in you. And they said X, Y, Z, um, nothing can stop you. Systemic racism can't stop you. Institutional bias can't stop you. The boss at work can't stop you. The person that doesn't want to promote you can't stop you because God will promote you. Even when the people don't want to promote you, God will promote you. Promotion comes from the Lord. So you're just like, you just remain confident in God, God confident. I'm confident. And that doesn't waver. That doesn't go up and down. Okay. And so instead of, and I, no, no, let me change that. Keep doing your affirmations. If you're doing affirmations, keep doing it. It's a good thing because what you're working on is the, is the soul realm. You're working on your mind and that's good. You're, you're renewing. That's part of your renewing of the mind. It's good, but it won't get the whole job done. You got to get some faith declarations from the word of God. You got to get the word of God. The word of God is the only thing sharp enough to divide between the soul 
and the spirit. It can go in there and it, it has the ability to go get those childhood memories. It has the ability. The word of God is a scalpel and it will go in and it will cut out any 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 cancerous, malignant, negative, detrimental thinking that you have. The word of God is a scalpel. It will go in there. It can go in there. It can take out. It can take out heartbreak heartache, betrayal, rejection, I don't care what it is, abandonment, any, for, uh, any form of childhood trauma, molestation, all of it. The real stuff that makes you shaky about what you can do or can't do. The failures, the prison time, whatever it is. I made a gigantic mistake. You may say, I made a huge mistake. Man, I messed up. The failure, the word of God can go in and take that failure out. It'll just go in and take it out. Because God's original intent, you're not a failure in God's original intent. We're getting back to how he formed you in the womb before he brought you forth. So I need you to be God confident because when, you, when you're, when you're self-confident, there's always a place that self is going to fail you. Always there's a place of success and advancement that self can't get you there. Self cannot take you, but God can. So if you anchor your self-confidence, we're fixing self-confidence. You anchor it, but you anchor it in being God confident. Wherever the place of failure is, God's confidence overrides. I'm not good at it. God is. I can't do it. God can. I don't have enough. God does. He'll liberally supply. I don't believe in myself. God does. Go see what he has to say about you. God says stuff like I can do the scripture that we're focusing on today. Well, there's actually a couple of them. Romans 831. What shall we say then? What shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I'm God confident. If God is for us, who can be against us? I can do anything because God is for me. Romans 8, 37. Yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. You're more than a conqueror. Romans 8, 37. You are more than a conqueror through Christ who loves you. You are more than a conqueror. That's what you need to be saying. Every day, God confident. You need to know that you're an overcomer born of God. You need to know you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You need to know that before God formed you in the womb, he knew you. He sanctified you. He ordained you to do whatever it is that you're called to do. Logan's ordained to change people's physique, their physical body, and in the process, change their life by changing how they think about themselves and feel about themselves because he's showing them that stuff that they don't think they can do, they can do. He's showing them, let me show you what you can do physically. And that changes every other aspect of their life. And he's infusing them with the word of God all the whole time. He's working them out and, and improving and changing them. So he's using what he's ordained to do, but he's changing lives for the kingdom. Use what God has called you to do. Change lives for the kingdom. That's You take whatever you are called to do as a business owner, whatever you're called to do, and you do it for the glory of the kingdom and just be confident in God. So yeah, do the affirmations, but get some scripture. Get some scripture. You need to know Ephesians 2.10 from the New Living Translation that tells you that you are God's masterpiece. You're God's masterpiece created to do good works that God planned for you long ago. Ephesians 2.10 tells you you're God's masterpiece. His signature is on you. He signed you with the Holy Spirit. He put it like a Picasso, like a Van Gogh. He signed you, but it's God. You're signed with the, with the master artist's signature on you. Be confident. Now, people around you are going to think you're arrogant, but you're not. You're not arrogant. That's their own intimidation. You're not saying you're better than somebody. You're not putting anybody down. But you just, when you get it, that God lives in you, he dwells in you, he's anointed you, he's appointed you, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. When God created you, he said, this is very good. 
You're very good. That's in Genesis. I believe it's 131. Let me go confirm it. So when you get this, you can do anything that God tells you to do and stop being intimidated. So Genesis 131, it says, then God saw everything that he had made. And indeed, it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Genesis 131. So you need to just be like, I'm very good at everything. I said, How, how's it going? Great. Because God created you that way. And so we develop, we change, we, we, we renew our mind, we work things out, we work out our salvation with fear and trembling, but your belief and your ability to do whatever it is that God's called you to do in business, in family, in ministry, in whatever capacity that you're functioning as, you can do it because it's very good. I used to tell my, my, my clients, you're a 10 plus on every scale there is. On a scale of one to 10, you're a 10 plus on everything because God created you and you're very good. So you need to anchor that in your head and then you work on whatever you need to work on. You work on your fitness, you work on your money, you work on whatever you're working on, but you're anchored in the fact that I'm, I'm a 10 plus out the gate because God created me that. See, when you do that, when you're God confident, nothing can affect yourself concept because your self-concept is based on God. Your self-worth, you value yourself because it's based on God. So you can't make yourself more valuable or less valuable. Your mistakes, your failures, your setbacks, whatever you do, whatever you do, you can't earn more of God's love. He already loves you the maximum amount he's ever going to love you. He sent his son. You can't make God love you less because he's going to forgive you. You're not less valuable to God or more valuable. You came out the womb as valuable as you're ever going to be. So you don't have to do status to make you more valuable. You don't have to acquire stuff to make you more valuable. You don't have to have external validation from other people to make you more valuable. And that is really dangerous because when you need validation, you'll do crazy stuff to get people to validate. You, you have to constantly do more and more and more to get people to validate you. When you need it externally, and it's very dangerous. That's what peer pressure is. You got to teach your children. You don't need to be validated externally. Your validation comes from the Lord. You're amazing because the Lord made you amazing, period. So we can teach. We got to teach our kids to be God confident. So then when they're like, well, I'm not as good as this person in sports, or I'm not as good as this in math, or I don't read as well as this other person. You got to let them know, man, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. God made you. You're very good. You're more than a conqueror. You're an overcomer. You can do it. I'm going to work with you. We're going to do it. You can do it. You can do this thing because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. We got to train up our kids in God confidence. And as adults, we have to reprogram all the stuff that told you what you can't do. That's why people don't start the business. That's why people don't go forward because they're looking at what their capabilities are and like, ah, oh, I messed up last time or this failed or I didn't couldn't I couldn't do this or I couldn't do that or this didn't go well. And you got to throw all that out the window and be like, what did God say? Okay, fine. You made a mistake. Fine. You fell down. Fine. You 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 uh, didn't succeed in the last business, but this time you're going to succeed. You didn't get it right last time, but you're going to get it right this time. Because God's going to keep working it out. He's confident in you and he's going to keep working in you. God is working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He's still working in you. He's working. He's working. He's working. Have you got it? Do you get it? So keep doing whatever you're doing. You do affirmations, do them. I just want you to add scripture and I want you to fix the faulty place because the faulty place is what causes you to fail. The faulty place, the place of failure, the place, if you're trying to break out of sin, you've got to be able to go. If you have an area of sin and you are in bondage to that sin, like you just cannot conquer the sin. You just, you tried, you just can't beat it. You're in bondage. But the Bible says that he that the son says free is free indeed. The Bible says that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. He set you free for freedom, for you to stay in and walk in freedom. So you can be free from addiction. You can be free from whatever it is that, that has you bound up. You, you have a weak will. You sin. You fall down. You don't do things right. Well, God is going to strengthen that. You're not going to strengthen that inside yourself because that's your place of weakness. You're not going to, you're not going to, 
fix that on your own, you go to God and you say, how do I, how do I fix that? I keep struggling with bad choices. Well, that gets fixed in the book of Galatians. That gets fixed in the fruit of the spirit. Thank God we have the Holy Spirit because everything you lack, the Holy Spirit brings. I'm going to say that again. Thank God for the Holy Spirit because everything you lack, the Holy Spirit brings. Everything. Every place of weakness, failure, you don't have enough. You could be dealing with situations that are your own fault. Bad decisions. Maybe you made some bad financial decisions. You're trying to deal with it. God doesn't leave you at the, when, you, when we got ourselves into it made bad decisions. God steps into the place that you made a bad decision. He takes over. All you got to do is just surrender. You're still more than a conqueror. You're still. You just surrender. Like I messed up. I did this wrong. You're human. We make mistakes. We mess up. But you can't be willful and disobedient in sin. We talked about that before in the blessings of obedience. You can't just persist in it. Grace isn't to let you just persist. Keep doing it. We don't just persist in unrepentant sin. Just that's rebellion. We're not talking about that. You you surrender. I don't care how long you've been bound up in the thing. Surrender it. And then God can deliver. He will deliver. He'll free you. Jesus frees people. That's what he does. But let me read this to you from the book of Galatians. And then I'm going to finish with this because the Bible says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy. I'm in uh, Galatians chapter five, verse twenty two. But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering. Thank God he can get you through trial because the Holy Spirit is long suffering. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Do you know you have all the self-control you need when the Holy Spirit shows up where you lack self-control? The Holy Spirit brings self -control control. The Holy Spirit brings discipline. The Holy Spirit brings that ability to rein yourself in and get yourself in alignment with the promises of God. The discipline of God, the diligence of God, whatever you lack, you get fully in the Holy Spirit, but you have to yield to the Holy Spirit. That's why you're not dependent on what I can do. I know I'm human and I know I mess up. I know I'm frail. I know I have to repent every day. For stuff I do wrong, this gets me in trouble because I'm a speaker, but I can also be quick. You know, I can say things. I'm not doing it to try to hurt you, but I can say things and it can be it can come across real direct because I don't sugarcoat. I'm going to tell you the truth. And sometimes it's painful. So I have to temper that. I have to go to the father. It's like, okay, that was a little too tough. Go back, fix that. So we all have the thing that we deal with. I'm not, better get a donut. I'm not sugarcoating nothing because your life is at stake. But God made me that way so that, and he, he grew me up in a family where my dad was that way. My dad was career military. So he grew me up in a military family and all this so that I can do what I'm doing now. So I can do kingdom swap and I can teach you how to like, when your life is as that you're battling the diagnosis, you don't need anybody sugarcoating. You're battling for your marriage. You're battling for your kids. You're battling, you know, your kids are caught up in addiction or something's going on with your children. You don't need anybody sugarcoating. We're going to get in this word and we're going to go to war. So I have a tough nature because I'm called to be a warrior. I am a warrior. I don't have a lot of tolerance. When people aren't, you know, I'm just like, toughen up. But I've gone through things that, you know, even my, even my metal resolve has been tested. But my calling, I can't afford to be soft and sugarcoated. I'm not called to that. I'm going to be direct, straight, straight shooter from the word of God. Let's go. That's where I'm going to be. But I still have to, you know, God's working. He works it out. He's working out his, 
his good plan in me too. Okay. So I'm called to coach. I may coach you when you don't want it. I may give you some advice. I didn't ask for that advice. So sometimes the Lord's like, don't give me advice. They didn't ask for that. They didn't ask for your input. They don't need power coach right now. Just tone it down. Okay. So we all work on stuff. We all work on it. I got to work on it. I got to work on stuff. I got things I got to work on. I got things I got to get tougher in. I'm not even as tough as God wants me to be. He's still working on me to get tougher because some of the situations y'all are dealing with, it's going to take every ounce of what we've got in Kingdom SWAT to get you through that situation. Some of y'all are going through some stuff that's like for real. So I got to be even tougher. I got to be even stronger for what I'm called to do, for what I'm called to lead. So I got to, I'm in the refining fire, just like you. I'm in the refiner's fire, just like you. But the difference is I know I'm confident in God. I know I will ultimately get to where he wants me to be because I'm confident in God. It's not about me. And I'm not hung up on external validation. I'm just like, it doesn't matter. If you believe in me, you believe in me. You with me, you with me. If you're not, you're not. If you're you come and SWAT, great. You don't come and SWAT, God bless you. I love you. It's fine. Doesn't affect me. I know what God told me. I know the number He told me. I know how many people it's gonna be. The foundation. I know the foundational number. He didn't give me the ultimate, but I know the foundational number. And I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna go to work and I'm gonna do what I need to do every day till I get that number. Kingdom Millionaire Movement, I know the number. He told me the number. I'm going to work every day until we get the number. I don't care because the validation doesn't come from people. I don't care. How, how is that going to work? How are you going to do that? I'm not listening to that. I'm listening to the Father. That's where I'm trying to get you to be with whatever he's called you to do. Listen to the Father. Got it? I want you to put in the chat, I'm God confident. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. God looked on all he had created. It was very good. I'm very good. I'm blessed. God's grace is sufficient. What I lack, the Holy Spirit is bringing. I can do it. You called me to do this ministry. I can do it. Shout out in the chat if you get it. Love y'all. God bless y'all. What I lack, God is bringing to me. Yes. That's good, Yolanda. She said, what I lack, God is bringing to me. Whatever I don't have enough of, I'm God confident. Like whatever, wherever I come up short, whatever failure you see in me, whatever flaw you see in me, people criticize you, whatever flaw they see in you, God's perfect in that area. So whatever I don't have, God's got it. So I'm good. I'm okay. God's going to do it. Woo. Okay. Love y'all. We're going to pray. Let me give you a couple announcements. Isn't that good? We're God confident. What scriptures were we talking about today? We were talking about, we're still talking about spiritual warfare, but I want to change your posture. So we're talking about Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I want you to get that. God confident. I want you to get Romans 8, 37. Yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors. And gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. That's the Amplify. Amid all these things, we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. That's God confident. That's Romans 8, 37 in the Amplified Classic. Listen to this in the Amplified. It says, for I am persuaded beyond doubt and sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That's Romans 8, 38 and 39 in the Amplified. I am persuaded beyond doubt, am sure. That's what the Apostle Paul said. I am persuaded beyond doubt, am sure. That's God confident. When you're persuaded beyond doubt and you're sure, 
I am persuaded beyond doubt, and I am absolutely sure that Kingdom SWAT is going to change lives all over the nation. We're going to have prayer warriors in every state state and we are going to have business builders in every state and people are going to change their finances they're going to change their health they are going to change their relationships and we are going to absolutely shut down the attacks of the enemy in every aspect we're shutting down john 10 10 the trifled attack the thief does not come except to steal to kill and to destroy but jesus came that we would have and enjoy life in abundance to the full to the overflow i am sure beyond doubt I'm persuaded beyond doubt, am sure, that what God wants Kingdom SWAT to do, it's going to do. What God wants Kingdom Millionaire Movement to do, it's going to do. And you need to have the same belief in your business. I want you to put, I am persuaded beyond doubt, dash, am sure. Right? Like that am sure is in parentheses. That's what the Amplified Classic says. I'm persuaded beyond doubt. That's God confident. If you're, you're self-confident, there's a little bit of doubt. There's a little bit of voice back there that's like, but when you built it on, when you build it on you, there's a little but back there like, oh. but if you build it on the Lord, you can say like the apostle Paul said, I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure. Amen. Got it? That's good. God confident. God confident replaces childhood trauma, adult trauma, words spoken over you, limitations, other people. It replaces all of it. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure. Amen. Come on, Yolanda. Come on, Marie. I am persuaded beyond doubt. Get that. That's a good word right there. You want to make a you want to make an affirmation. That's the affirmation. Romans 8, 38 and 39. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure. I'm going to say that all day today. I'm going to say that all day today. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure y'all need to get into King of Swat, because we're going to be in these scriptures fierce. That's so good. I am persuaded beyond doubt your business is going to be successful. I am persuaded beyond doubt that that which you are believing God for is going to come to pass. I am persuaded beyond doubt that God is healing your physical body. I am persuaded beyond doubt that God is healing the relationships in your life. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure God is healing marriages. God is healing parent-child relationships. God is healing relationships between you and your parents. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure that God is destroying, burning up and annihilating sickness and disease in your body in Jesus' name. I am persuaded beyond doubt that every need is going to be met according to God's riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure that my God will liberally supply and fill to the full your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure that he that began a great work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure that God has given you the ability to produce wealth because he swore a, an oath. He made a covenant with your forefathers, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that he is honoring even unto this day. So I'm persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure that nothing can separate you from the love of Jesus Christ. There's not a demon in hell that can separate you from God's love for you. I am persuaded beyond doubt that everything that God has given you in a dream, in a vision, that it is going to come to pass in your life. I am persuaded beyond doubt that God is going to heal every wound, that Jesus is going to come in there. He's going to heal every wound, every broken heart, every, every difficult circumstance that you're going through. He's going to surround you and envelop you, even in grief. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure. I am God confident. I am standing on the rock of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, I thank you for this word that you have given us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for 
ministering this word. And thank you for never letting off of me until I get the word complete for these people. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every person under the sound of my voice. And I pray that something I've said under your inspiration, Holy Spirit has made a difference in their life and is causing them to step forward and accomplish the dreams and goals that you have called them to. That they can go forth and do the mission assignment that you put on the inside of them. That they can break out of a faulty self-concept, self-worth or self-esteem. They can break out of childhood trauma. They can break out of adult trauma where they have been injured, hurt, betrayed, wounded, abandoned. Lord God, that you're breaking them out of any limitations. If they no, no financial limitations, I don't care. Job loss, termination, layoff, bankruptcy student loan debt, I don't care what it is, Father God, that you are turning these financial situations around completely. I thank you, Lord God, no matter what past mistakes, those that have made mistakes, fell down, sinned, I'm persuaded beyond doubt, I am sure, Father God, that you, in your loving kindness and grace. You're forgiving them. You're restoring them. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure that you're cleansing. You're removing sin. You're removing bondages. You're removing addictions today, Father God, in the name of Jesus. You're removing dependencies. God has given me a word. It's not at the point of, of, of a, an addiction, but you're dependent on something that's not his best. So God is even breaking that dependency, that reliance where you're leaning on something that's not him and you're replacing it with, with your dependency on the Father. And he is healing and restoring you in the name of Jesus. Father God, I pray that you bless your people in abundance today, that you replace self-confidence with God confidence, that we can go forth and do what you called us to do. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Oh God, we can do it because we're God confident. We can do it because you called us. We can do it because you've anointed us. We can do it because you're breathing on it. We can do it because you're putting your strength and power behind it. We can do it because we're co-laboring with you. We can enlarge our territory because you are the one that is causing us to have those opportunities and those open doors and you're opening up doors that no man can close. So we can do it. We can enlarge our territory. We can go forth. We can accomplish all of it because you called us to it in Jesus name. The big dreams, the big vision. The big vision, the big dreams, the big goals that you've given to us are not too difficult for you. Father God, the thing that makes us feel like, how can I do that? You are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we would dare ask, think, or even imagine according to your mighty power that's at work on the inside of us. So we can do it. I am fully persuaded, Father God. Beyond doubt, I am sure we will do what you have called us to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I seal it, decree it, and declare it over every person under the sound of my voice. It is done. It is sealed today. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let it be done according to your word, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen, 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 and amen. My God, that's a word today. That's a word. Whew. I am fully persuaded. I love that. I am persuaded beyond doubt. I am sure. I am persuaded beyond doubt. That's where we got to be. We got to be persuaded beyond doubt. No doubt, no fear, no unbelief. I'm persuaded beyond doubt. Woo, that's good. Okay. If you do not have your book, your 90 day financial breakthrough, get it, get it, get it. I get this word when y'all get it. God doesn't tell me everything. He just tells me to start. Then he gives me the word when you get it. So if you don't have this book, your 90 day financial breakthrough, go out to Prosper with the Power Coach and get it so I can get this in the mail to you. Okay. Get your book so I can get in the mail to you. Praise the Lord. 
and get signed up for Kingdom SWAT. All right, Kingdom SWAT, here's the key dates. That's good. Hey, Mary. Hey, Alicia. God bless y'all. Brenda, God bless you. Good to see y'all. Okay, dates, April 5th, fight night, Kingdom SWAT only. So if you're not in Kingdom SWAT, go to prosperatthepowercoach.com. Do your registration fee. It's 50% off right now. Okay, do that. You need class one. That's required. You have to go to class one. The next running of class one is Sunday, April the 7th at 5 o'clock p.m. to 8 o'clock. So it's on a Sunday evening. Everybody should be able to make that time. OK, so that is going to be Kingdom SWAT class one foundations of warfare. You need to get in there. OK, then April 13th, we are moving on to class two, which is principalities um, and promises. OK, we're going to talk about know your enemy. We're going to identify the principalities you need to know how to shut down spirit of infirmity, spirit of fear, lying spirit the named ones that are in the Bible. So you know how to take those down. And so we're going to cover that in um, class two. So all of that is on the website. Go to Prosper with the Power Coach. They're the top three links at prosperwiththepowercoach.com. Get your registration in. Get class one in. And then you've got a minute to get, you can get class two. OK, if you've already done your registration, you've already done class one, go ahead and get registered for um, class two, unless you're in SWAT. I'll handle that differently. OK, so if you're just taking classes, go out there to Prosperous Power Coach and hit class one, class two. If you're coming into SWAT, you need to uh, get your registration in in class one. All right. And then you can participate in all this stuff. Yolanda said, yes, get the book. It is powerful. Thank you for that testimony. She is working her way through it and she's doing great. Okay. So Yolanda said, yes, get the book. It is powerful. That's it for today. All right, guys. So we won't be here tomorrow. Um, tomorrow's Good Friday. So have a great, I'll probably pop on for a little bit to talk about SWAT a little. Um, but we won't have teaching tomorrow. OK. Um, amen. Sherry's in her book as well. If you are not signed up, uh, I want to get as many people into SWAT, get going with these classes, because it's a different type of thing that we do in the classes, because I'm going in depth. We're doing slides. We're on Zoom and I'm breaking down these scriptures and I'm going in depth. So if there's anything you don't understand about spiritual warfare, um, you want to get in there. So. If you were in class one, shout out. If you took class one with me and you were there, go ahead and shout out last Saturday. Shout out in the chat if you were in class one. And that'll be a great thing. OK, so then tomorrow will be Good Friday. I'll just pop on and say hello, but we won't do a teaching. And then, of course, get your rest. And then Resurrection Sunday, we're going to have a great Resurrection Sunday and everything. OK, so if you, you were at class one, go ahead and shout out. So I can see who's on. Good. All right. Thank you, Marie. Amen. Thank you, Berlin. Yes, Yolanda. Did you learn? Let the people know. You're like, you better get in class one. Foundations. And then we're going to be ready for Know Your Enemy. That's going to be so eye-opening. You guys are going to be like, wow. You're going to love it. Kingdom SWAT. Special weapons and tactics. We're going to learn these weapons and these tactics. Weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. We took down a stronghold today, faulty self-concept, self-worth and self-esteem. That's a stronghold. That defeats so many people. We took it down today because we're going to be God confident. Yolanda, she said, I highly recommend the class. I learned so much. The revelation. Amen. 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 Thank you. It was a pleasure to have you. I can't wait to have you in, in uh, SWAT. It's going to be great. OK, if you're not registered, get registered for SWAT. You get 50 percent off right now. You're saving a uh, hundred dollars right now. So and that's one time the registration is once and then um, 
it'll be easy from there. So it's just one time so I can do the work that I need to do to prepare for you personally. Okay, that, that's what that registration is for. And then you'll be part of SWAT Academy. Verlene is in SWAT Academy now. Very good. Good to have her confirmed. Okay, guys, I'm done. Thank you. Uh, Verlene said, eye-opening. Class one was very eye-opening. It's good. It's good stuff. All right. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I keep saying I'm done. Let me turn y'all loose. How are we doing on time? Oh, I'm 10 minutes over. Okay. God bless you guys. I will not see you for class tomorrow. We'll do, um, I'll just pop on and kind of give you an update of what's going on with SWAT and then enjoy Saturday. Have a blessed, if I don't see you, have a blessed resurrection weekend, blessed resurrection Sunday. Enjoy the miracle. It's awesome what God has done for us. And then I'll see you back on Monday. And then we're going to be running and gunning to get ready for a big, big week with uh, Kingdom SWAT moving forward. Kingdom Millionaire Movement, if you're ready to start working on your finances, you want to work on your credit, cash flow, taxes, debt, and investing, get into Kingdom Millionaire Movement. The links are there, prosperwiththepowercoach.com. If you're ready to start really fixing your money, fix your credit, your debt, ritual over the poor, borrower, slave to the lender, get out of that debt slavery. You're ready to get that tackled. You're ready to get out of debt, fix a credit, get your taxes down. That's your biggest bill that you pay all year is your taxes. Get those taxes way down. Get your investments way up. If you're ready to get that done, get in Kingdom Millionaire Movement. Okay. Jump over here with me. All right. Thank you, Sherry. Yes, I will. I'm looking forward to a great resurrection weekend. So God bless you guys. This is the power coach, Madeline Alexander Barbie. I always want to tell you that you're gifted for greatness. You are encoded with the exceptional, whatever's burning in your heart to accomplish. It is yours to achieve. I want you to be God confident. That's all you got to do. Shift that self-confidence to being God confident. Let God infuse you because whatever you lack, God has. And whatever you're not able to do, the Holy Spirit will do through you. In Jesus name, go out there. Have a great, great weekend. God bless you. Be safe. Uh, enjoy your worship. And I'll see you back here on Monday morning. God bless you guys. Take care. Bye bye.